a malware-infected web story from something called the Washington Free Beacon. Now, that story, which was about the NSA leak scandal, compromising unknowing readers with a form of malware undetectable by antivirus software. And we're joined from Washington by Steve Ward, who's a vice president at Invincia, the cybersecurity firm that, uh, well, outed this infection that, got, that found it, got to the bottom of it. So, Steve, thank you for coming on. First of all, yeah, sure. why does this uh, look like the Chinese? Actually, in this particular case, we're not convinced that it is China. Okay. It, it looks more to be uh, driven by organized cybercrime, um, and most likely um, uh, culprit would be uh, a Russian business network, uh, as we refer to them, or um, cyber criminals outside of you know former Soviet caucuses. Uh, but the tactic itself uh, has been employed in nation-state type type attacks. Um, in, in those instances, we call them any of these, as they're called, news aggregations, the aggregators of news that many of us. Um, or using a link off a of Drudge appears to be aimed at you know, the, the two million or more uh, potential visitors that Drudge gets on a daily basis. That's the thing, I mean, regardless whether it's um, you say organized cyber crime or somebody else. Hidden Drudge or any of these, as they're called, news aggregations, the aggregators of news that many of us use to get our news. We don't necessarily go directly to the source. We go, whether it's Drudge or, you know, it's the Daily Beast, on and on, these places that link to other stories. Is that suddenly not safe? I mean, and the, so many people get their news that way. Well, I mean, I think what this shows us is that the Internet isn't safe, um, and, and that's an unfortunate situation, and it's one that we have to, to really tackle, um, and one that I think, you know, with the work that you guys are doing in terms of exposing the cyber threat, uh, mainstream America and the boardroom is really starting to wake up to. But uh, what it boils down to is this. Uh, anytime any of us go out to the Internet, um, we're woefully unprotected. Um, we rely on these technologies like antivirus uh, to protect us against these, these drive-by threats, against these uh, malicious software uh, attacks. That, that hit us un unknowingly, uh, but those technologies are antiquated. Um, they're largely uh, built uh, around uh, attacks that we saw 10, 15 years ago. Right. And what we need to do is find ways to sort of put ourselves in Kevlar, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, encapsulated environments or bubbles, um, so that anytime we run around on the internet, uh, we're doing so um, in a uh, in a sort of malware airlock. Uh, we've, we've got to find new ways wow. to, to solve these problems. Yeah, because when we look at our email, we become trained to look for certain things. I mean, some are just ridiculously obvious like the old the crown prince in Nigeria and he doesn't have the money for you we know that um, some are hidden better now obviously these criminals have gotten better at it but still in your email it, it seems like it's easier to detect knock on wood in this situation though it's you know, very easy to open up Drudge or again the Daily Beast or one of these sites in the morning and you're reading through the news and you see something that's interesting and boom you click on it without thinking is there something we should look for in those types of stories uh, different yeah. sources I mean what do we look for how do we know or do we know you know, there really is no way to know, hmm. um, and, and that's the whole point of yeah. the attack vector. Um, the adversary is playing into human trust, right? Um, Drudge, a, a very trusted source of news, uh, the, the Washington Free Beacon, a legitimate news source, um, injecting malicious code into a legitimate website, uh, and, and lurking and, and waiting and hiding um, uh, for people to come by is basically the, the new MO of the adversary. And so really, again, it's about us coming to... All right, now we're going to set up for our war drive. And we're actually going to be war driving a neighborhood that I grew up in. My earliest memories are actually right here in this house off to my left. And I lived here from ages three to six. So I figured we'd take a look at how the old neighborhood has secured their wireless. All right, I'm going to be grabbing my laptop. I'm going to be running a version of Backtrack while we're doing this. And I'm also going to be grabbing my trusty Alpha AWIS 036H adapter. All right, so. Um, this is a pretty classic card. It is uh, external, USB in nature, and it has a 500 milliwatt to a thousand, uh, one thousand milliwatt or one watt, one watt power. So I'm going to turn my put my external antenna on. Give me about a 9 dB gain, and plug it in, and away we go. So let's go ahead and hop in the car. Let's fire up Backtrack and let's take a look at what we got. All right, so let's go ahead and hook that adapter up. Now this adapter, depending on where you buy it and the options you choose, can come with a little holster, which is kind of cool. It has a suction cup on the back of it, and you can just stick it to your window. We're going to get some pretty decent range out of it without drawing much attention. You know, what's that little thing hanging in that guy's window? All right, so I'm going to plug it in. We get the notification tone, and I'm going to plug it in. Uh, we're just going to use our our BT5 machine. All right, so I can actually just tuck this in the door here, pop our antenna up a little bit. 
All right, so I'm going to shut down Armitage that we looked at in our demo. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to do a quick check here, make sure that the adapter is plugged in. And right now, it looks like it's actually connected to a different host. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and connect it. And we're going to double check that by doing an IW config. You open up a fresh terminal window here. Now we've got a WLAN 2. All right, so the WLAN 2 by itself, by default, is not going to listen in monitor mode. And that's what we want. So I'm going to do an IF config. WLAN 2 down. Bring it down. I'm going to do an Airmon NG check kill. Kill any competing processes. And we kill a couple uh, instances of the DH client. And then I'm going to bring it back up. So I'm going to do an Airmon ng start wlan2 all right it's going to take it a second and it's going to come up with a monitor mode adapter so it's got a virtualized version of the adapter and we're going to have a mon zero all right at that point we're going to just like we saw in in our demo we have monitor mode enabled on mon zero and now we can uh, actually ch uh, channel hop and look at all the different wireless access points so what we're looking for is some wpa psk and then also in a residential community, and then also we're going to be looking for WEP. Absolutely, you know WEP is a slam dunk. So I'm going to do an Airmon ng mon zero Aerodome. Sorry. Okay, so what we've got, we're going to go expand this out a little bit, and we've got lots of WPA uh, two, lots of PSK. All right, so we see a bunch of WPA. We got some WEP. And our signal strength shows the proximity. Uh, the, the lower the, the dB loss, the more powerful the signal is. So we would also see some associated clients. Now, we're coming up with a heck of a lot of wireless going on here. For the most part, this neighborhood's pretty secure using WPA2. Now, the pre-shared key, it de depends on what they've used for that pre-shared key. We'd have to go ahead and start running a air crack attack against it or uh, something like cow patty. But we do have some WEP. And we do have some PA. So this neighborhood does have some potential vulnerabilities, especially with that web. If we went after the web, uh, I am very confident we would have that web key in a matter of three, four, five minutes. We can't really take it much further here. Uh, we've discovered a lot of access points. We've discovered a lot of broadcasted SSIDs. Ooh, there's a Reedster. Interesting. <laughs> My last name being Reed. All right, so we discovered a lot of access points, but at this point, if we compromise them without permission of the owner of the target, we'd be acting unethically, and of course, we never do that.